Hello and welcome back to the channel. It has been a long time since I published a video. In fact, I wanted to actually sing a song. It didn't quite work out with the video recording, but it was, hello log seek my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. I was away from my computer for a good few weeks in August doing a meditation course. And then as South Africans say, I was in the bush as most other countries say, I was on safari. So it's nice to be back now and getting back into the swing of things with Logseek. I really miss the practice of daily writing when I was away and when I got back it was a flood of words and I also moved a lot of my notes that I'd written on my tablet into Logseek and started reworking them again. So very nice to be back and in the short space of time that I've been away there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes in Logseek and a lot of little improvements. So I thought I would do a video that highlights some of these updates and also highlights some of the other updates that have happened over the year of recording videos that might be useful to someone who hasn't kept abreast of all the changes in Logseek. So there's, I'm going to be looking at five things that have changed and then I'm also going to touch on five changes to my personal workflow to accommodate some of these changes and yeah, just move with the times a little bit as Logseek progresses in its development. So let's get into it. So there we go. We're going to look at the feature updates, the PKM updates or my ways of working. And then finally, just some things that I've been working on in the background. As I said, I want to do a lot more YouTube videos that are just like unstructured and quick because it's a lot of fun. And a lot of the work that has gone on into the course is like highly structured. And yeah, I'm probably not going to be doing extensive tutorials on different features in Logseek anymore just because that sort of stuff is available in the course if you want it but the workflow stuff and like thinking about how to structure workflows and, and do different things in Logseek that's a lot more fun a lot more fluid and I can just talk to the camera without having prepared hours and hours so yeah that's what I'm going to be looking at in this what's coming next section just some of the thoughts in my mind and that are coagulating into new ideas for videos for the channel. Anyways, let's get into the Logseek feature updates. So why are these feature updates? Why, are, why the number five? Well, it's just for me salient things that have emerged in the last few months. And it really is pretty arbitrary, but it's quite nice to be aware of these things because they can help you change the way that you work with Logseek. So the first one over there is improved properties functionality. Now properties when Logseek first started and in some of my older videos, you'll see, uh, let's actually just close that again. You had to enter properties like this where you'd say shift enter and then properties you create a properties container and then say now my property is a type and then i say end so i've seen a few questions in some of the older videos like what the heck is going on there you don't have to worry about that anymore that is the org mode um, form of properties i actually don't use that property type much anymore i, I rather use like an input property for articles. Now, basically, what is a property? A property gives a bit more information to your link. So if I have, for instance, my name, Dario, or my page, Dario, and then I just have a date underneath there, that's a, like that information doesn't have any context. But then I can say Dario, and then a page property, birthday, and then a date that gives that link a lot more meaning. So you can think about that in any different context. So for my metadata, for articles, for books, whatever, I'm using properties a lot to specify this is the, or the producer of this article is this person. The tags for this article are these tags. Instead of having it be like a mishmash of tags and links, you can do that, but properties helps you structure it a lot better. So let's just delete that. And the way that you do properties now is you can just say colon colon and it allows you to scroll through a list of previously selected keys. So a property has two parts. It's a key and then a value. And as I said, the key would be birthday and the value would be date. So for instance, for me, I would say like this is an input and there's my matched properties. And then I could say any of these inputs over here. So I could select articles, books, cartoon, whatever, something like that. Something to note here is that at the moment, it's not inserting that as a link, whereas my way of doing it is to insert that as a link. I use text expanders. So instead of doing that, let me just enter there, create a new block. I would say using a text expander, JJIA, and that gives me this, this block that I can enter all the information in there. 
but it's still a nice functionality that you can just go enter and then say colon colon and then it allows you to say select your property and then select the pair or the, the value for that property so nice ux functionality improves your searchability as well because you can click there and go and see all the different inputs in your database now i've got 680 inputs into my database and this speaks to another point which i'll speak to a little bit later in my personal workflow which is better differentiation between input and output okay but let's go back to where we were and clean this up okay the next feature is a very cool feature and that is full text search in pages but more importantly in pdfs i don't think this has been that widely publicized but now you can actually search your pdfs for words now that sounds trivial but you weren't able to do that in previous versions of logseq and that is really a key feature of a pdf reader you want to be able to search words and go and find things so the shortcut for that is Control f so if i look at this page quickly let's say Control f and let's say let's search for properties 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 there we go you can still use the Control shift k shortcut to search in the current page but that Control f is very nice let's go find a pdf to have a look at with this functionality so admittedly it's still a little bit clunky because if i say Control f and i want to search for something let me just say um, culture because this is talking about distributed teams you can see there that it's searching on the left but it's also search searching on the right so if i actually say let's look for the word and it's looking on both sides of the page which is a little bit clunky maybe this will improve in the future but let's look for another thing which is um, organization with the american spot whoopsie organization station and there we go it's enabling me to scroll through the different instances in my pdf which is super nice as i say it would be nice to have that on the left there for the pdf itself but now at least you can go and search through a pdf okay closing this up the third thing to highlight is improvements to the filters in link references so previously you were met with an unordered mess of just all the different links all the different pages that are also linked to a page that you are on so now you have the ability to sort by the number of links or it's automatically sorted by the number of links so i've navigated here to my articles page i've got 179 link references and most of these articles are entered as blocks in my daily journal that's my preferred approach for doing it because i don't want to clutter up my database with lots of pages but that's a whole nother um, debate over there and i want to now go and filter this for some content or some person so i can see here I can go to the filters at the top right there and now it shows the number of different links so you can see that i've got a lot of articles from subconscious a lot of articles from peter atir some from kehi let's go have a look at some subconscious articles so what are the ones i have here and then i can see all the different articles that i've i've entered into my database from subconscious which is a substack newsletter very nice um, newsletter and I can filter this even more. I can see, okay, cool. What are the different topics that I have here? Oh, systems design. Very cool. And now I can remove the subconscious filter. And then I can see here, oh, there's, again, this ordering of like layered architecture. And I can go and see there. So it's, it's very nicely sorted by links. Another feature that has been requested, though, is to be able to sort by both alphabet, so alphabetically, and then also by date of input. So just to note, you can do that with queries, but you can't do this in the search filter menu, which would be nice, but alas. Okay, going back. Inline block references are a very simple UX feature, but really makes it nice to read things inline. So when I previously had a block reference, it would zoom into that specific block and then show me all the different references. Now what I can do is I can see all the references of that block exactly where it occurs in the page so let me just go to a page that i've been working on so this is a book that i've just been processing in logseq it's called anamkara and i've got a number of passages over here and i've broken it down into different topics and you can see here with these little numbers that these are block references so i'm using these somewhere else in my database i'm transcluding them if i look here and i click on that it shows me where i've used it in my database so i'm 
using it on the Scratchpad personal page underneath the topic of overanalyzing. And I've written a little bit here, which is sometimes our attempts at self-discovery are too direct, etc., etc. And I've taken this block and I've made a block reference to it below. Similarly, if I go there, this is also in the Scratchpad page, also in the overanalyzing section. Let's actually just bring it up on the right. I've written a little bit here about overanalyzing. You can see I haven't even linked it, so it's all messy. It's all in the process of like, you know, forming in my mind. And these are the quotes that I've taken from this Anam Kara book, and I've moved them into my writing over there. But it's nice to be able to see that in line instead of having to like navigate to that block. So previously what would happen is it would take you directly to that block and you couldn't see everything else. You'd lose the context of the page. Very nice to be able to see that in line now. And the final feature which I wanted to talk about is the namespace queries. Namespace queries are a great little addition. Namespaces, for those who aren't aware, are a way to add hierarchy into your database. And what namespace queries allow is you to bring up the structure or the breakdown of your namespace or your, or your hierarchy that you've created anywhere in your database. So for instance, one of the things that I have been doing recently is uh, restarted Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I've got this namespace. So this is how I do it. So it's namespace and then I have BJJ and this will bring up all the different positions that I've been entering into my LogSeq database. Now, I could also go to the BJJ page and see that there. So never mind the positions. And I could access this at the bottom here with you know the traditional hierarchy um, toggle over here. But it's nice to be able to do that anywhere in your database. I've got another one. So maybe I want to figure out, like bring up my intentions in some other page. So this is, you know, namespace query. So namespace. And then intentions and then it will bring up all my intentions over here okay so this is uh the, the way that you do that as you can see there is a normal um curly brackets and then instead of saying query and then a term you say namespace and then the term that you have created a namespace for okay so that is a nice segue into the second portion of this video which is let me just delete this over here and go out a level and then go into this pkm updates on my ways of working indexes all the indexes so this namespaces really allows you to create nice self-updating indexes of the content in your database so for instance some of the things which i'm doing this for are events learning materials, organizational hierarchy. I've already shown the BJJ example, but I'm quickly going to look at what I mean by events. So what does this look like? I'm going to say forward slash namespace and then the year 2022. And then it will bring up some of the things that I've done this year that I want to be able to return to quickly. So Africa burn, minor pool ship, a partner need to add a few more to these things, but yeah, it's all a process of building it out. And then similarly, let's say namespace and instead of BJJ, let's say PKM. Great. So there are some things that I've got about PKM definitions, the future of principles, reasons, system setup, etc. Again, very messy, but yeah, nice to be able to just access that very quickly. And then organizational hierarchy. You saw that I was showing my scratch pad. Scratch pads are different, just like different areas for writing in. And I've got five different areas. So let's quickly have a look at that. So namespace and then scratch pad. And there we go. Those are my five different areas that I write in. I just have those like dumping grounds and it's very nice to be able to go and navigate to those. I'm just showing that the namespace query, uh, that I can use the namespace query for that. I wouldn't necessarily do that here. I would, you know, go to my Scratchpad page and then navigate from there. And I actually have, if I just say TL there, all my scratch pads are here in my left hand menu so that I can quickly navigate to them. I use this as like a mini dashboard basically to navigate to those pages. Okay, let's close this up and look at the next thing. And let me close this up too. So TL there and being clearer on what is input and what is output. So you saw that I used the property input and then articles. I also have output articles. So input is what I'm taking in from other people, output is what I'm producing. That's one way of doing it. And 
yeah, there we go, it's in properties. But for me, the real nice change in the way of doing things is by using markdown quote formatting. So you would have seen in the Anamkara book that things which are not mine are shown in this nice format over here. And what's mine is shown in just, you know, plain text format. So it's a nice differentiator for what is mine and what is not mine. So if I quickly go to Anamkara again, so let me go to the book and then open it up on the right. Here is an example. This is a passage from the book. I've given it, I've put it underneath this you know, section of healing slash integration. And you can see there that the markdown quotes is added just with this greater than sign. So that is very, very simple to add. And then my writing here is just in plain text. So again, this is a quote. You don't even need a space there and it will give you this nice formatting. Super nice just to be able to see what's yours and what's not. Okay, closing this up and closing this up. The third point here is embracing my messy casting and that is a reference to the Zettel Kasten system. Over a year ago, I made a couple of videos which looked at how I built a Zettel Kasten or how I was building my Zettel Kasten. And I think I made two mistakes there. Not to say that the workflows were wrong and that they didn't work. It was just a bit laborious to keep up. It was trying to process every thought and add too much structure and keep everything in the atomic note. So creating an atomic note on a page for each individual thought as it was breaking down. And that just wasn't sustainable. So what I've really done is simplified my workflow and just keep it light and easy. So if I just click in here, as I say, I was trying to treat each note as an index card, which you can do and you can create a note for each page, but you can also just leave things in blocks on a page from their source. And I'll, I'll show you that now. And then, as I said, trying to process each thought. And this wasn't joyful. It wasn't something that I could keep doing. It wasn't sustainable. So the approach for me going forward is really just keeping it simple and easy. And that is a teaching from Joseph Goldstein or Joseph Goldstein's teacher. And yeah, you really don't want to make this a complex thing. You know, there's a lot of workflows that you see out there and you'll see people pouring through books and like, you know, making sure they get every detail and writing, you know, the, the perfect Zettelkasten card that can be used in future in other different contexts. By all means, you can do that if you have the energy and time and the intense focus on that topic. I don't, I'm quite scattered. I like things across different topics. So I like to just have appropriate tags and leave things in place. A good example, again, is looking at this Anamkara book where I've broken down the passages and I've created this breakdown of, of links and tags. And then I'll go and I'll write in each of these tags. So there you can see I'm writing underneath that. It's linked. I could find that again at any later point. I don't have a solitude or you know some atomic note which is talking about solitude as a process of coming home to yourself and then I've gone and write, written in detail made sure I tagged it there honestly that takes a lot of time it takes a lot of forethought and I just embrace the system of ha having everything be a little bit of a mess and if I open up my organization scratchpad page so let's go organizations um, there we go and you can see here that all of these tags, again, are, you know, very, very messy. Lots of different things coming in from different places. This is a, a block reference here from wherever it might be. Don't even know. And then, yeah, I've just broken things down into different groupings and using the outlining system of Logseek just to like collect different thoughts and indent them underneath one header and then collapse that so that I can have many different thoughts in one page. And if you've come across the concept of MOCs, an MOC can be both an index, so a table of contents, which is just like, you know, a system of links that could enable me to go and link to this workplace dynamic or link to decision making. But it's also a collection of thoughts that you're working on. So this decision making here, for instance, some of the things that have been I've written down, I've just collected them in this page and they are not well formed and eventually when I have the energy or I come back to it and it feels like something I want to work on, then I can go and expound on that further and then solidify that into its own note. But for the time being, there's no point going and structuring a new note. I just want to be able to return to this. So 
for me, what makes a good note is something that you can come back to or a note taking structure. So in the same way, like I've been thinking a lot about this, like what meditation app is the best to use? The one that helps you meditate. What note taking system is the one that is best to use? The one that helps you come back to your old notes rather than like struggling to find them or whatever. And I've spoken a little bit about this in another video, I think, which is our notes tend to be these one way systems. And this is a concept that I got from the subconscious newsletter where we put things in and then we never come back to them. A good way to structure your notes is to create feedback systems so that you can build upon the flower wheel of information. Okay, so that's a little bit about how I'm thinking about the Zettelkasten, not this perfectly structured like conversation partner, but I can always go and find those things again. Like I am very easily able to return to the information that I want to return to later on. The next thing is using CSS to beautify my database. This may seem trivial, but it really does help to make it more pleasant to work in your database. And it's something that I resisted for a very long time because I first wanted to make sure that I knew where everything was and how everything fitted together. But I realized that I could have probably done this a little bit earlier and it would have just made it a little bit more pleasant to work in my database. So for instance, I really don't like the tags um, in the normal theme. And I also don't like using other themes because sometimes things mess up and yeah, it's just, I've had a little bit of back and forth with using different themes. That's neither here nor there, but I've just added some of my own custom CSS. So if I say tag one, you'll see I now get this little blue button. So you would have seen that in the different, um, in different sections. The links stay the same. So tag one, that doesn't really change. And I also have some other CSS. So for instance, inbox, this just draws my attention to it. It's a nice little red button. Some of the ones that I use frequently. Now I'll add my CSS as a link in the description. So go have a look at that if you want to, but it really helps you just to enjoy the interface a little bit more because I think a lot of people have expressed to me that LogC can seem like a little bit of a coding interface and it's just a little bit intimidating. Sometimes the CSS just helps to beautify it and draw you in a little bit more. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is just improving my structuring within pages. So you can see here that I'm using markdown headings. So if I go zoom out to this page here, I've got a consistent pattern of markdown headings where this is markdown heading level two, this is markdown heading level three, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just, you know, a nice way to break down your pages a little bit more. And this is one of the benefits of Logsy because that you can have so much information in this page and it's very easy to collapse it. So TO expands everything, TO collapses everything. I can move these things around. You can do this sort of thing in other programs. Obsidian, for instance, everything is in a page and you can and you can use the outliner plugin. But with LogSeq, the outline functionality is native and that's quite useful just to be able to work very quickly around things. So if I go to my book pages, for instance, let me go to my book. Um, yeah, Anamkara, again, let's go to that example where I've got a write-up that I'm doing on the book, which I'm not gonna zoom into now. I've got different passages from the book that one I can zoom into. Actually, let's look here, the write-up. Yeah, so these different things that I've started writing up. And then some reflections on the book. And that's a little bit more personal, so I'm not gonna share that. But again, it's all broken down with these like markdown headings. And to be able to use the outline functionality and be able to expand and collapse what is underneath the parent level blocks. Another page which I wanted to show you is this home page. Again, just broken down if I say TO, TO. Okay, so there's my um, my high level structure on my homepage. It's not an MOC in that sense where I go from a home page to different other pages as you'll see in other videos and other channels. But I have just some things here which I want to get back to. So affirmations, remember to rethink your approach, whatever, some long-term writing, um, what I'm working on here and now, current priorities, you know, just like a breakdown of things I can return back to when I'm losing a little bit of focus or traction. And then just looking at this reflection and introspection page or section, what I've got here is I've embedded my questions personal page so that I don't have to go and link out to that and go and see the information there. I can literally just embed other pages within pages. So it's like page section. So for instance, I want to embed that. Let me not do that over there. Let me do it here. Oopsie. Um, the page that I've been working on or the video that I've been working on, I could literally embed that page 
uh, which is five ways for some reason that wasn't working um, five updates to log seek there we go okay that's the page name and there we go so I've decided to forego the last part of the video, which was a couple of things I've been working on for the channel. Very excited to get them into the public eye and yeah, I hope to see you around here in the future. Thanks so much for watching the video to the end. I really do appreciate your attention. If you'd like to support the channel in some way, have a look at LogSeq Mastery, which is now available in two parts, tutorials and workflows and systems. Tutorials are specific to LogSeq, but workflows and systems can be applied to other personal knowledge management software. You can also have a look at my coffee page or the Linktree page for affiliate links. Thank you so much.